Once upon a time, geometry was deeply connected to algebra, but then came a problem thought impossible. The solution to invent numbers so fanciful they were called imaginary. What were imaginary numbers? An imaginary number is a real number multiplied by the square root of negative one. The square root of negative one has no real answers because there's no number you can multiply it by itself to create a negative number. However, a solution to the square root of negative one does exist in this new number system called the imaginary number system, with the backbone of this system being i. By taking multiples of this imaginary unit, we can create infinitely many more pure imaginary numbers. History. In 1494, Luca Pacioli published Summa d'Arithmetica, a comprehensive guide to Renaissance Italian mathematics. Within it was the cubic equation, written in the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero. A general solution was considered impossible for thousands of years. At the time, the best attempt occurred 200 years ago when Persian mathematician Omar Khayyam found numerical solutions using spheres and hyperboles, but he could not find a general solution. In 1510, Scipione Dal Ferro found a method to reliably solve depressed cubics. He kept his method a secret, only revealing it to his student, Antonio Fiore, on his deathbed in 1526. After Del Ferro's death, Fiore, thinking he was invincible, challenged Niccolo Fontalia Tartaglia, who independently solved the problem just before the competition. He then dominated Fiore in the duel, 30 to nothing. Girolamo Cardano, a talented polymath, later found out and asked Tartaglia if he could use the algorithm. Tartaglia gave in, but only after Cardano swore an oath to secrecy. Cardano then played around with Tartaglia's technique, and with a lot of math and a little luck, he surprisingly solved the full cube. Unfortunately, if he published it, he would have violated his oath. Fortunately, after finding the work from the original discoverer, Del Ferro, he believed he could finally publish the complete solution in his book, but along the way, he discovered cubic equations that broke his formula. The idea of roots of negatives came from the idea of negative areas and Cardano's paradoxes. Ten years later, Raphael Bombelli invents a new type of number and assumes that the two terms in Cardano's solutions can be represented by the same quantity of real numbers and this new number. René Descartes later popularized the square roots of negative numbers, leading to the creation of this new number and liberating algebra from geometry. Turns out, the cubic was just the beginning of the possibility. In 1925, Erwin Schrödinger developed the famous Schrödinger equation, which describes the behavior of quantum particles. This equation, based on Louis de Broglie's understanding that matter is made up of waves, is considered one of the most important and famous in physics, and within it is I. It is also featured heavily in electrical engineering and fluid dynamics. But why is it involved with topics that seem to have no relationship with each other? When combined with real numbers on a perpendicular axis, they form complex numbers. Complex numbers have some very unique properties. For example, when adding complex numbers, it's like adding normal vectors, and when multiplying complex numbers, we add their angles and multiply their magnitudes. This gives whole new definitions to what we consider normal arithmetics, and explains many phenomena very precisely, such as how two negatives make a positive. Interesting things happen when we repeatedly multiply by i. We rotate counterclockwise 90 degrees for every multiplication. If we graph this a long time, we get e to the it. The real part is a cosine wave, while the imaginary part is a sine wave. The two quintessential functions that describe waves are both contained in e to the it. I believe that more people need to know about these fanico numbers. Sure, they're given the terrible name imaginary for a reason, but they're just as real as the real numbers. Even though they do not exist in the real world, like two apples or three saplings, they are just as useful for representing the phenomena that drive our world. They also led to the separation from algebra and geometry, allowing us to think more abstractly and come up with better models for our universe. As Drake Mueller quotes, only by giving a math connection to reality could it guide us to a deeper truth about the way the universe works.